good? You good? Yeah. All right. I hope I ain't breaking up too because I'm, I'm driving a little bit. I'm, I'm leaving the gym. Right. iPhone 4G. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Scott, but, um, I'm be quick with that. <laughs> what? <laughs> so Scott, quick with the iPhone comment. Uh, Anybody yeah. service go out? Now that's good. Now he got the he got the XR. He upgraded. Man, Play out both. Play out both. Young Zeke, Young Zeke in the building. Oh, I man. man, what's up, my Nick? What's up, what's up my Nick? <laughs> <Good. laughs> what's up, my Nick? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My bad. Let me. <laughs> All right, duty. You can go. You can go ahead, bro. Everybody just. Everybody just keep it on mute. Hello. All right. So, uh, hope I ain't cut now. But, um, it's well. This is our second time doing this, and I think the main thing we want to discuss now is like after a week of. Everything been going on after all the killings, after all um, us discussing different things that were going on. I know at the time it was probably like a lot of protests and looting. And then now after a week of stuff going on, I, I know for me personally, uh, I've only been to one protest, but it was a re actually a really good event. It was very peaceful. Um, there was probably about 10 speakers there that... Um, Spoke about a lot of good stuff, just about basically just standing up for who you are, standing up for these people, standing up for us and for all the youth and just being able to head in the right direction. Uh, it was a lot of good people of talking about healthy ways to discuss everything because a lot of people don't know how to express their message. A lot of people just rage and this and that. And Obviously, all the stuff that's been going on, it's all a reaction to hundreds of years of a lot of stuff. We said that last week. Um, but now we have to start pushing, pushing a message of basically, like, how can we better going forward so that our youth are in a better position than we are now? Like, we're in 2020. I would hope and pray that by the time it hits 2050, like, our kids and stuff are in a way better position than us. You know what I mean? Like that this systemic racism and all that aren't in place anymore and that we can be able to help provide that or do our part. I know a big thing that I said last week also was like, man, like voting or getting to know people who can be in positions to vote. I know I sent something to Bryn that was like, man, I know that there's this, our mayor in Tacoma, she's, she's going out for Congress and like trying to look up stuff more on her, hear more from her, uh, knowing her story, knowing what she's trying to do, just in our community. That's just a part, that's just one part of voting in Washington or trying to do better in Washington. And also at the presidential le level, like obviously like I'm not a Trump guy. I don't, I'm not for what Trump is about and how he goes about doing things and I don't think that we need that as leadership like we need somebody who's about all the people all different races all diversity here and how we can be better as a country um, and so that's something that I got to look into more because I'm not even sure who the other candidates are as far as like what they're about and how they can help us all as a whole and not just you know let all this just go by and stuff like that so um yeah that's really like my little spill about everything this week uh i wonder how you guys feel you guys can go ahead kind of popcorn it i guess and so you guys can get off how whatever y'all feel about everything y'all had i know a lot of people were like man like things hadn't really settled in yet so um y'all can kind of go ahead and if there's more there discuss it and like you know, we're all just going to listen from there. Uh, 
shoot, I'll go, I guess I'll go. Um, <laughs> one thing, one thing that I, I think uh, for me that stood out. Well, I, I've just been thinking. I don't know how. I've been trying to process like how this whole thing's gonna play out, just in general. Like I'm just really curious on how. Like there's not really like an end, and it seems like obviously we we're talking about Trump earlier. He just seems to be putting fuel on the fire and. The police, they haven't stopped doing their thing. So I don't know. I just don't know. I'm just curious on how this whole thing plays out. But w one thing I'll say, like, I think it's dope how all around the world, there's so many people that are, um, it's really sparked something. There's like protests everywhere. So I don't know. I, I think the thing that I've, I've been kind of still processing and struggling is the people that are still trying to justify what's been going on. Or like, if I talk to people and they're trying to, to like make it about something that it's not like it's because to me this is like a human thing it's not a political thing it's not like a democrat republican thing it's like a, it's a human issue and i feel like people that more often than not the people that i find that are resistant or do have like those racist tendencies they try to turn it into oh like liberals this like that like they try to make it um something else i find too i find that and i find that they love the to throw like numbers or stats out instead of dealing with the issue. It's like people, like anytime I talk to somebody who is like a conservative or this, and I'm not like anti-conservative or whatever, but people that kind of have those types of like sentiments, like when I talk to them, they're like, oh, like in the past, I'd be like, oh, black employment is at this percent and the economy is this, and they start throwing numbers. And I'm like, but you see on the video that, like, I don't know how you, I don't know. Me, me and Des have talked about this a little bit. We talk about um, stuff like that. But to me, those are just like red flags. And like to me, and that's just stuff that I've been trying to uh, process. But um, I don't know. It sounds like we're going to capitalize on this moment and move stuff forward. And and sounds like people are trying to vote. Like I was hearing like people are registering to vote um, and things like that. So I don't know. That's just kind of where I'm at right now. Just processing everything. So that's all I got. Yeah, I'll, I'll piggyback off that, G. Um, one of the things that I've been really focusing on is a word called reframing. And for me, learning what that meant is to view one problem from multiple different perspectives. Because anytime we are approached with a problem, we typically only bring our experiences to that problem. But if you look at just this group alone, Gaddy from Tacoma, Dez from the Bay, G from Oregon, DG, I'm pretty sure you're from out here in LA by me. You're bringing different experiences to the same problem. He may be dark skinned, I may be light skinned. So even in our blackness, we have different experiences. So one thing that I did, I wanted to understand a little bit more about the ops. Like what are they, what position are they coming from to view this problem in a different way that I am? So I reached out to a cop and he was black. Um, He's a lieutenant in Gardena out here. And I wanted to know, I said, man, educate me. There's some things I'm missing. I'm hearing eradicate qualified immunity. Um, I'm hearing defund the police. These are all things. I was out in the field at these protests, um, several of them. And these are all things that I'm hearing. What does all this mean for you? And basically the way he broke it down for me, I took like two pages of notes without this conversation, uh, throughout this conversation. And what he said was, the police tend to view these situations with two questions. And the first one is, are they following the law? When these incidents happen, the first question is, was that officer following the law? The second question is, did he violate policy? If they can check yes to one or either of those, there is no more discussion. No matter how morbid it looks, no matter how disgusting it may be, we're looking at the carrot to choke holds, does not matter. If it was within the law and he did not violate policy, that, that, discussion is over. We as the public tend to look at this with one question. How does what I've seen make me feel? And so there's a disconnect there because we're looking at it like, man, he's choking a woman. This is a black woman out here in the street by herself. He's choking her. And we've all seen it. Some people are posting things where, yeah, they were kind of resisting arrest. And so that got a little rough. But what he also told me is it's unfair. It's unfortunate. But as black men, especially, and as black people, it's our job to make these officers feel like we're not a threat. White people don't have that problem. And so you look at like Philando Castile and all these different issues. He was black and he's telling me, I got to tell my son the same thing. It's 
when you get stopped, if there's a a one-on-one -on -one interaction with an officer, the goal is to go home. If you went home, you won. We can deal with everything else later, but you want to make sure that you go home. And so looking at it, we're looking at all these things like George Floyd, people are talking about a criminal record, all these other things. He didn't get to go home. He was a human being and he didn't get to go home. He didn't get to deal with police brutality through litigations and what's on the back end. That was that. And so we're looking at it from one, how did he make, how did it make us feel? But also when you look at it from their perspective, that was an egregious violation of the law. And so when we're looking at changing these laws, when we, when we ask, what can we do to be better and, you know, change the situation, we've got to know the law. We got to know when they are in violation of the law because most people don't. And so they're upset, but we have to, we have to educate ourselves on the law. We need to know the rules to the games that we're playing. That's what I got. I'll say, um, I think that is absolutely correct that, you know, we're, we're definitely, um, one second. <laughs> um, we, we need to educate ourselves on the law, but I think, we also have the, the issue where white people are in the same instances. And I think that's where it's coming where you're saying, how does it make us feel? White people end up in the same situation and they get to go home. And I think that's where the fight is like, okay, yeah, maybe the law is they're not in violation of the law. They are in violation of the law. But our white counterparts are in the same violation of the law or worse, you know, in some instances like Dylan Roof shooting up an entire black church and he goes home like how how is that fair and that's not just one instance it happens you know over we all know that this happens over and over again so i think it's it's both sides like we need to understand the law better that that's a piece of it but the other side is like okay as a cop you can look at it are we in violation of the law but you guys cannot just murder somebody that's a violation of the law you can't just murder somebody even if you say um I guess from my, my point of view, I, I'm thinking, how in the world can that be within the law? I'm not saying that you said it was within the law, but in times past, these officers sometimes don't even go to trial. Sometimes they just get a slap on the wrist. And I think that's where, like, the uproar – and I'm not saying you're not saying that. I'm just clarifying, like, how, I, you know, how I'm viewing the situation. Um, that's, that's what I think is uh, the main uproar. So I don't know if that – went with your point or if it wasn't exactly with your point, but that's just, that was just my take on, on kind of what you really said there. No, I agree because sometimes that's like to what you're saying, that shouldn't be within the law to treat one person a certain way and to treat another person a different way. We're looking at people who were shooting up schools and they're bringing these people Burger King before they take them to jail. Just because that's within the law doesn't mean it's right. Like slavery used to be legal. That doesn't mean it's morally right. So I think we're fighting to know the law so we can change it to fit our morals because we as a people are fighting for what we know to be right. And we're fighting for what the Constitution says is right, but other people don't, they're not affected by it personally. So they don't feel it like we feel it. It's just like, oh, well, the law protects, the law protects you. It doesn't protect us. Yeah, exactly. And that, and that basically is just, the systemic racism, basically. That's, that's, it's literally built into the law to be against us. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, I'll go ahead, Brian. you got it. I was just gonna piggyback off of what Carrie said. I actually have been trying to understand how cops feel as well. So I had a patient who was a cop um, in the last week, and then also one of my guy friends, um, who's also a cop, and I just asked them, like, what is their take? And they said that they haven't met a cop around them that has not said that this was wrong, that what they have seen is wrong. So they all agree on that. So I was like, okay, so then is there, like, a lack of teaching? Is there, do you guys talk about racism? Like, what do they teach you? And he's like, honestly, they have 720 hours to teach us what we need to know to be in law enforcement. He's like, yes, I, I do feel like they could do better, but they do what they have the time to do. And so I was, I, I guess I was torn on that because I was like, okay, like I've talked to some of his, or talked to him about some of his tactical work. Um, some of the officer, other officers shared 
their experiences. And I was just like, there's a disconnect on what they're teaching these officers too. And I don't feel like 720 hours is enough for them to learn how to control themselves when they feel threatened, if that's the way that they feel, whether they're black, white, Puerto Rican, or Asian. I don't feel like they, I th they're just so quick to, I, don't, I guess, use the wrong weapon, whether that be a knee, whether that be a gun, whatever it is. And I, that's where I wish that they would spend more time. Um, to kind of go with that, I, I agree with Bren. I think, uh, and then back to Carrie's point in talking about understanding um, what's going on or like just getting both perspective. I'm always like the type of person that I got to know both sides to kind of make an educated decision on what I'm dealing with. But I, I mean, I don't think that is wrong that we act in our feelings when we see these type of things. Because just, just like Scott said, our counterparts are they're they're getting to go home they're getting to do whatever when they do these type of things but black people it could be the smallest thing so when they bring up george, george floyd's rap sheet right and or they say why he got arrested in the first place they say he was count he was a counterfeit 20. that's one counterfeit 20. so for that one counterfeit 20 you have to hold your knee on his neck for for eight minutes until he withered away with other cops standing around him not doing anything you know what i mean so that's I think I believe that's where the uproar comes in and that's where it, it just looks weird. You know what I'm saying? Like how you said slavery used to be legal, but morally, is it right? No, it's like when we look at it, it's like, yo, it doesn't matter what kind of what kind of crime he committed, what what he did. It still doesn't justify what you did. And then his life is taken away. So I agree with the point of, you know, trying to see it both ways. But then it just sucks because. It's not just that we saw that. It's like we're seeing this all the time. Like we're constantly getting video. I, I, I beg somebody to give me a video where a white person is just killed, like shot out, shot down on the street by the cops for nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so that's that's what kind of gets me going about it. And that's how I kind of feel about it because it, it I get emotional thinking about it because it's like, bro, it's wrong. At the end of the day, it's wrong. Whether we understand, whether we know both sides or not, it's still wrong. And it's like, how do we get to a place where we can move past it? And do we? Do I think we'll ever in the country of America move past something like that? I don't know. Can we get better? Yes, we can get better by, like Brian said, like uh, facilitating the hours better and uh, or the length of the time of the training or taking more time to train them on the right things and not just whatever. I saw a thing, somebody posted a meme that it takes so many hours to be a barber but it takes it takes way less hours to be a cop. That's crazy. And then with all the killings that and stuff going on, that like that's that's ridiculous. So, I mean, just for me, from where I stand, it's like it's just from I'm reacting out of my feelings, but it's still like just my eyeball test is like it's wrong, bro. And regardless of what any police officers say like I respect cops and I and I feel bad even though they killed him I feel bad for them because it's like you got three cops yeah they didn't do anything to help but they were sitting there and now their their whole life is ruined because they didn't think enough to morally make a decision to help somebody who was getting killed or who was dying on the street you know what I mean so as a as like it's just in my faith I'm like I feel sorry for them and I and I I pray forgiveness for them but at the same time, it's like, I still, it's like, it, it was, it's warranted because you didn't do anything to help. None of y'all did anything to help. You feel me? So that's kind of where, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah, um, is, this, is this not just, oh, my bad, go ahead, man. No, go ahead, right? Let me get your point No, out. I was just going to say, just, I'm just reiterating the point that everybody has been making. This is not, it is not justice. It's the justice system, and we're, we're getting no justice. Like, I mean, Carrie was talking about it. Dee talking about is exactly what everybody's been talking about. It's like we we're not even a part of the law. Basically, it's just like whatever. Like you can do whatever to them, and then like yeah, we're reacting out of that, but we're also reacting because we ne we don't get justice. And oftentimes, like what Dee was saying, but I I cannot think of a video where I saw a black officer killing a white dude, or even a white officer like strangling some white dude to death. Um, I'm not saying it's not out there, but 
it is massively disproportionate <laughs> compared to, you know, black people getting murdered by by the white officers. But go ahead. Uh, um, there's, um, yeah, I was going to comment uh, to what DJ DJ had said about you know the other officers, and I had a conversation with a friend of mine that's training to be a police officer right now, and uh, it was in a group conversation and we were just kind of brainy. he was sharing like what they're trained to do as far as like in that situation because our question was like it's three other officers like why didn't any of these other officers like step up and say like yo like he's not like resisting anymore let's get him in the car like and it's over with and what he told us was that when they're out like in the field like they're not supposed to like pretty much check each other in the sense where you're supposed to like almost like you know how like a ref a ref won't show up another ref about a call. It's the same thing from what he explained with police officers in the sense like when we're out here like if I'm wrong, y'all back me up regardless. Like you don't show me up out here in public basically. And so you know our conversation kind of went towards that as far as like I mean. I look at it from a leadership standpoint in the sense of you guys are all in position, all four of those officers are in a position of leadership. So whether one's doing wrong, one's handling the situation wrong or not, like the protocol can't be, we all gotta be silent when this man is, if, just because even if he's wrong, like our protocol is like, we gotta, we gotta rock with him anyway, even though he might take this dude's life. And we know, the other three of us know like, like we need to tell him to chill out. But our protocol or like what the code is amongst police officers is like we just got to rock with it like that can't be the protocol like that can't be okay and then i end up seeing um somewhere that I, it might have been minnesota or i can't remember the state exactly but that they were going to change that protocol that they were no longer going to like allow or demand like other police officers to be silent if they feel like they need to correct an officer in the line of duty, like they're gonna allow that. So, I mean, I think it's kind of ironic that that's that they're trying to make a shift in that because I think when you watch that, when you watch the video, and then when you see that when you saw the other video of the other officers like holding them down as well, like you gotta think like how how all four y'all like in tune with this behavior, and so. Again, I look at it from like a leadership standpoint, like because these people are in a position to practice leadership, and you can't have like this follower mentality, like across the board, just like all right, one person decided to go out here and just be a loose cannon with his gun, and we just got to rock with it, like that. That can't be okay. That can't be like the standard practice. So, I mean, I'm just kind of commenting on what DG said about um, the other. Mm -hmm you know, officers and like, to me, that was one thing that like really like struck me just when I had that conversation is like, that's the protocol is like, I mean, in one sense, honestly, like they said that blue wall of silence and that whole, that whole thing, like, but you, your, your job is to, you're sworn in to serve and protect. So like, you gotta honor that with integrity. Like, even if that means like, you gotta check the man next to you, that's where the integrity comes in. And like, you, it can't be like, you know, depends on who it is. And then I think that's where the frustration from the black community comes out. We see when it's, when it's a judgment call, we get in the short end of the stick nine times out of 10. And I think that's when you see the reaction and the response and this outcry across the world because it's like, I mean, we're at that point where it's like, this is not acceptable. Like, we can't keep watching this. I'm tired of watching this. So that's all I got. I'm not. You know, another thing, I don't know about you guys, but from where I was from, the police weren't really in the community like that. Like, they're, they're policing you, and it's almost like, like the overbearing dad who just can't wait to catch you slipping. Like there's never a good job or they're not building with you. They're policing their cities 
but they're not actively involved in the community and to help building it like that. And so the relationship off the rip is already damaged. I already know you're only coming around for something negative. Like your hope is to take my freedom away. It's not like you're out here. You don't recognize me as a ball player who, man, I had 30 the other night and you were at the game. So there's no pass given. There's no relationship built because if, to be honest, if I was to get stopped by a cop and he pulled me over and he knew what type of person I was, I already know off rip I'm going home. But if he just pulls me over and sees another black man or another statistic, well, I'm, it depends on how he feels today. You know what I'm saying? I think that's one thing they could really get better at is to just be in the community like that. A hundred percent, bro. Nah, yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, they definitely have to be, I mean, it's a, it's going to be a, a group effort. Like it's, it's going to be a whole like village type of mentality. Like it's going to, it's going to take that because um, if you're just leaving it to judgment and you're just leaving it to like, certain people telling you of somebody else, then you don't, you don't get to really know the person. That's the same, like if somebody told, you know, the same concept, if somebody told me about somebody, but like, oh, I never met them. I don't really know. I gotta see it for myself. Um, so just in that, like, I agree. You got, it has to be a group effort in that sense. Um, and to Dez's point, I think that also like, they're just, we have to just like somehow find a way to get people in positions of power who are going to be able to make change so that we can have the proper uh, protocol and um, training for these police officers so that they're making a judgment call that's the right one. Because that's at the end of the day, in anything that we do, it's always just about like, like doing what's right. Um, regardless of people's egos, regardless of emotions. Like we all go through it in sports. We go through it in our jobs. We go through it in our relationships. We go through it in parenting, anything that we do. But you're always just trying to do, man, like what's just right. So no matter what a cop feels or it's like, oh, you don't want to show them up, this and that, like you got to make a call that's the right call. I've seen a video of a black lady who was a black cop and she made a call. I'm sure she showed this white man up. She made a call and she grabbed him off of, uh, a young black male and she was pissed off rightfully so because she didn't know what he was going to do and she just made a judgment call she probably she could have got fired don't know what happened from it but i know she made a judgment call that was the right one he probably was doing he probably was doing something maybe a little extra that you know he could probably still go to jail for but the call the wrong call is he don't need to die for it you know what i'm saying like that's that's absolutely the wrong call you know what I'm saying? Like, you arrest them, you put them in the back seat, and you get them to, you know, where you need to take them, and then we go from there. But she made a call, and like, it, we need more of that. We just need more of make the call that's the right one. You know what I'm saying? Like, besides ego, besides anything else, like, it has to just be the right one. We have to be able to put people in positions of power to do that same exact thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, we gotta be able to vote for people who can like actually try to make that change and pass certain laws or acts or whatever we need so that these things can happen. I think these protests are an act of that, you know what I mean? And keeping it peaceful. We need to keep it peaceful and be in the streets. But the main thing that I saw the protests is like, a lot of it is just um, people are just like, man, like we just wanna be treated fair. That's it. That's all. Like, no, this ain't revenge. This ain't like, oh, like, we're going to give y'all what y'all been giving to us. Nah, none of that. It's just, you just want to have a fair shot. That's it. I want to have a fair shot of knowing if I go to 7 Eleven to get some Skittles, I'm cool just as much as my homie Michael <laughs> or whoever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to have that same opportunity to be cool. You know what I'm saying? Like that's because that's a, that's what it should be like to be an American. That's what it should be like. Should be like that. Obviously it's not, but that's what it should be like. It's like, man, like I shouldn't have to be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm this or that. It's like, man, like I'm, I was born here. I'm an American. Like I'm, we're all the human race. We're all human. So we should all be treated as human. So 
I, I think um, because I've been kind of c- conflicted on this. Well, maybe not conflicted, but I don't know if policy change or like the training, the way we train cops or the hours they do to become a cop. I don't know if that'll actually change anything because I think it's a like if you're a racist dude, it don't matter how and you don't like black people and you feel threatened by them. It don't matter how long you're you train to become a cop at the end of the day, you still don't like black people like you're still uh, you still don't trust them. You still don't you're suspicious of them. And I think that's one thing that's like this whole I think that makes this so much different is people for the first time are having like tough conversations and people are realizing, hey, black people didn't grow up the same way I grew up or like they've had different experiences and things like that. Like, I think like I've, I've kind of like done some, like looking into like how the police formed and how like the police structure, like what the police is today came from like slave patrols. Like I I had an idea, but I didn't know that. But it's like, if, 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 if the way we police our communities, if like the early police structure was for off slave patrols and trying to catch property and slaves or whatever and then y'all lose the civil war and then now all of a sudden it's hey we're gonna start threatening black people we're gonna start we're gonna try to control black people by intimidation and fear and killing them and lynching them and making examples of them and then all of a sudden like black people like they start recruiting out the south and that's where like a lot of like lapd they started getting their dudes from the south like things like that like it's to me it's like a culture issue and I I try to the way I like process things I relate everything to basketball I think of it as like how do you change like a team culture so it's like how do you change like police culture like to change police culture I don't know if it's necessary like hey we got to have these procedures we got to do this I think it's a mentality change but I think it's not just on a police level I think it's on a national level and it seems like it's happening on a worldwide level because people are having those conversations like people are realizing like white families are like, wow, like, how do I explain this to my kids? How do I explain somebody choking somebody out on killing somebody on TV? And then they're realizing, oh, wow, like, black men have to talk to their kids about this at a young age. They got to teach them this. Like, they're realizing this. It is hard. And it's not, they're not just, um, they've been saying this. And they're not just complaining or, or saying all those kind of things. So to me, like, I've been, I, I personally don't think it's good enough to be like, they need to uh, train different or we got to train them different or we got to whatever. Like, um, cause at the end of the day, if you're scared of black people, you didn't grow up around no black people and you're, you feel threatened when you see them. Like that's what it is at the end of the day. Like, and we, we got to break that down. They got to figure out that, I mean, we're just normal dudes. I mean, I don't know what to say if you didn't grow up around, like it is what it is, but there's gotta be like a shift in mindset. And I think it's happening. And I see that from, like uh like the protests like the type of people that are out there protesting you got white people holding up black lives matter and things like that i think uh this younger generation like we kind of talked about last week they're more informed and um they're more open-minded and and progressive and things like that and i think that's happening on a national scale but unfortunately like we talked about like the people in power they're like a lot of them are old white dudes like that have those old ways of thinking and um again i don't have the answers but this that's just my observation like i just think awareness is being raised and I see it from the younger generation, but um, we'll see how that trickles over. But I, I think it's crazy that it says black lives matter, like on the street leading up to the white house. I think that's dope. I think of all the, the black people who used to be slaves on plantation, all the presidents who own slaves, like things like that, like everything that's been going on. And then just to have that um, in front of the white house is pretty crazy, but I don't know. I'm hopeful, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, real quick, um, to go along with uh to go along with G, um, I think of everything like hoop too, but like you using the analogy of, you know, changing the culture, I think it ties into what what Duty was talking about in the sense that like if you think about changing like a hoop culture, a team, there's only way two ways to do it. Like if the if the people if the team that's there isn't doing it, then either you bring in a new coach or you bring in new personnel, right? So, That's exactly what I was going to say, DG. Yeah, that was spot on. Yeah, yeah DG. <laughs> yeah, you bring on a new culture, you bring on new personnel. So it's tough to it's tough for us to want, like we could want the culture of policing to change or just somebody from the top, like somebody in office that's going to make change. 
but I'm not a conspiracy theorist or nothing like that. But we got to realize too that whoever get up in there, most of the time they're getting in there because somebody else wants them in. And then at that point they're in and they're just a face. Whoever's running the country, like Trump isn't running the country. He's, he's just, they just letting him be him so that it can get people all riled up. But it's people behind them, it's people at a higher level that's saying, yo, this is what we want, push for this, push for that. And he's just the guinea pig that's doing it. You know what I mean? And like I said, I don't really get into all that stuff, but it's it's real blatant. Like you can see that stuff now. So, and then when it like to do these points, like when it comes to the police and like you could put somebody in the police station that's over and you could change the personnel by putting new leadership in there, but it's gonna be so many dudes in there that's on the low, that's racist, that's on the low, like don't they don't care who's in there, they're gonna do it the way they wanna do it anyway, to where they get riled up and then they're gonna and now you don't have nobody on the police force because all the racist people have jumped out and now they about to start the new Ku Klux Klan or something. You know what I'm saying? So like it's tough, but just like you said, G, I'm hopeful. I hope, I hope it moves in the right direction and continues to do it. The Black Lives Matter, that signs that are being held up by white people and different races all across the globe, like it's it's dope, like for real. But we just gotta continue to be prayed up and be hopeful because we don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, I'm with you uh, on the shift in culture, and I think you guys are all like on spot on point with it. I think another part of it, it is like the purpose of the culture, and like you'll pick based on your purpose and like what your intention is. So like you can say I. Uh, I want to throw a basketball coach, right? I want to win games, but how you want to win games? Like, to your purpose or like, yo, if I got to go do some under the table stuff, even though it's against my, you know, my morals, my, my code of ethics, I mean, which, what matters more, right? So I think purpose, it starts with, th with that. And I think that'll lead, like, that'll weed out, like, what, like the personnel you choose. Right, like I think, like that was one thing about when I was at Washington and when I was at St. Mary's, is like Romar brought in players that fit in. I, when I first got there, I'm like, yo, how does it is it that like this team is like everybody gets it? And when I was at St. Mary's, it's the same thing. It's like everybody gets it, and I think there was some intention on like getting guys that would that that aligned with the purpose, and I think. You can get outside of that when you, when, um, like hidden agendas get involved, and say it's a, if it's a numbers game, then like man, I, I got this purpose and I want to do it the right way. But man, it's a numbers game, and I just got to hire a bunch of people. So, you know, it really takes to do it the right way. It's gonna take this much time and this much money. We don't got that much time, and I don't want to give up that much money. So we're shorting the hours, we're shorting the bread. And we'll just hire people and they may be inadequate. They may not be that qualified to do the job, you know? And, I was, and that's what I'm just saying as far as like the purpose goes and how that can get tainted along the way in the process of trying to do things the right way. And I think like just in that sense of like trying to shift the culture is it starts with like having integrity with your purpose. Of like, why are you doing it? So up top, like they can say like, oh, I want to protect and serve, but like, when you go outside, like, is that really what you're doing? Like, is that really why you show up? Are you just showing up for a paycheck? Are you showing up because you want to, you, you like the, you like the power you have when you had that uniform on, when you wear that badge? Like, you know, you just like the power high you get when you, you know, get to patrol the streets and tell people what to do and talk to people crazy. And you see the intimidation that you get, you know what I'm saying? When you walk, you walk into a neighborhood or you pull up in a neighborhood and you see you, do you get like a, a high off of that is that really why you're doing it or are you doing it because you really want to help people do you really want to protect and serve i think if like the purpose is like authentic it'll show like if the if the true authentic purpose is to protect and serve and make a difference then it matters to like go outside like carrie was saying and be outside with these people and get to know your community that you are patrolling that part matters when if you're living within in that purpose right if that's authentic and real for you, like you say, like you sworn in to do, when you go outside and to know these people in this neighborhood, you know, you'll, you'll, 
you'll take a workshop class on like leadership or people skills or you'll do the you'll go the extra mile if that's really like why you are showing up to work every day you know what i mean like if that's really why you're doing it like you'll go the extra mile for it the same way the real reason why we was doing the hoop thing is like we you anything extra we was doing it because that like that was our purpose though right like that was our passion we wanted to be the best at it so we did whatever we could within our in our will to like make sure like we we did it at the highest level possible if that meant an extra workout if that meant extra conditioning if that meant extra weight if that meant watching extra film we did it but that's because like we were true to our purpose and our why and i think when you see like what happens in law enforcement i think it says one thing but i don't know if it's a whole lot of authentic authenticity and integrity behind it because you see what happens and it's it and again it, it just don't align to me so I think it starts with a purpose and like being real about that purpose and like fulfilling that purpose, even if it, even if it makes it uncomfortable, even if it doesn't work with, within the budget or if it doesn't work within the hours of training, whatever the case is, is like, you gotta, like, if your job is to protect and serve, you gotta do it like the right way. Like, and if that, if that mean it costs you some dollars, then, you know, it costs you some dollars. But again, I think it all boils down to like the purpose in it from jump. Yo, uh, Gary and DG, I really wanted to touch base on what you guys said specifically, because I think that's really important in being able to recognize the wins that we've collected along the way. Like the Black Lives Matter being painted in DC, things like that. You look at like places like Australia and New Zealand who are protesting, like, I think it's very important to acknowledge how much ground we've been able to cover with all this because we're nowhere near where we want to be, but we're not where we used to be. And that's for sure. You see people out here where, you know, they look at like a, uh, I saw a video in particular on social media where a couple of black dudes were from North Carolina, whatever they were out here in California, they got arrested they, or uh, they got harassed by the police and it was mistaken identity. And there was a bunch of white people out there with phones out, begging the cops to leave them alone. They were recording everything. That doesn't happen 20 years ago, you know? So I think it's so important to be able to understand where we're really at on this thing. Um, I know we have a lot of international experience on this call in particular. Everybody's at least traveled, if not lived in other countries. Um, Australia and Germany in particular, where they have really strict gun laws. So one of the questions I wanted to ask the group is, do you, do you guys think that would help? If we had stricter gun laws, do you think that would, that would, help minimize some of the stuff that we're seeing right now. Cause I think these debates are important. So are you meaning like gun laws in terms of like the police guns possessions change or us as people? Us, so like, okay, for in Germany specifically, the gun laws are ridiculously strict. Like if a citizen is gonna have a gun, it has to be disassembled in the home. So you can't carry it and it can't be it can't be, you can't have the clip in the gun and it's gotta be in a safe on top of that. So when the police stop people, they're not expecting you to have a gun. They're not expecting to die. So even if it goes to, to force, it's gonna be a fight if anything, they're not gonna get shot. So there is no Philando Castile, stuff like that. But at the same time, when you look at places like Texas, where the gun laws are super loose, cops are preconditioned to know how to deal with everybody having a gun. So they're not super jumpy if they see people with a gun. And right now, when you look at the West Coast, we're kind of in between. We're not Texas and we're not Australia and Germany, but like you look at like you have a conversation with some Australians and their number one question is, why don't you guys just eradicate guns? It's a simple fix. They had a, they had a mass shooting. They eliminated gun laws. Everybody turn it in, mandatory. They'll pay you for your guns. That was that, no more school shootings. This is the longest period we've had without a school shooting since, I don't know when, you know, we're used to reading this every month. Oh, this place got shot up. This place got shot up because our gun laws are kind of in between. It's really easy to get, but we haven't trained police to deal with it on every routine traffic stop. I would say uh, to that is just almost kind of, almost really, because I think even at the root level, it's just like Garrett said, this is a people problem. This is a human problem. But to that, um, it's, it's 
I feel like it's, there's one side and there's the other side. One is like, yeah, we could just follow that because Germany has shown the, the blueprint. Australia has shown the blueprint. Like, you can lessen more gun actions that have been bad for us in our country uh, by just doing that. But also, I'm sure you guys have lived in other countries or seen it and traveled and know that those people just act different. I know that by living in Germany and living in Italy, um, I know for sure in Germany, they, they act different after everything in the Holocaust happened. They know how serious that was to them to where sometimes it's hard for them to discuss it. And they know like, man, no, like no guns. Like we don't even think of that because that was bad for how our country was portrayed. Like, and we don't want to be like that. They, they follow the rules, which is a big reason why they're, they have an autobahn which they can drive however fast they want because there's just and they have probably less car accidents than us and they got an autobahn where you can drive as fast as you want because there's rules in place and they all follow them they all go you know when you're on the left side you drive as fast as you want when you're, if you're going to go slower you go to the right like and it's just known that americans we are known like this is how we are seen when we go out to another country we are seen as like people who are arrogant and we want to just rebel. We break, we just, we just do what we want. Like I'm going to be in the left lane. Oh, but if you're not going faster than them, uh, you can't be in that lane. Well, so I'm here anyway. That's how we are. That's how we're seen. And that's where I say, like, like Garrett said, like, it's a people problem. Those things have to change. Like, and I'm of the belief of like, you know, and I think Martin Luther King thought these things and that, it's like, I think they're aware of the fact that like real, real, real change is probably going to be way far down the line. And like you said, we got to do take the wins and we are, we are not where we used to be, but where the real, real change of where we are want to be is probably a hundred years from now, which is great because I want it to be better for my kids and kids, kids and their kids. Um, but it starts with us teaching our kids the right way and even you know the same having a discussion with white people and being able to say that same thing like we got to be able to have these open discussions and be like man like this is how we want our america to be this is how we want our country to be and right now it's not in a great place because of all the stuff going on and so like even also to what garrett said as well is like you're they're being taught to be a racist like i heard somebody say the other day like a lot of people are being told or taught not just to white people but even to like real africans or to asians that they're like man like be careful of the black americans because they act differently like they they you know they're going off of like our gangster look or whatever like oh they they gang and they do this or that like they're foolish they do whatever you know and so to that is saying like, man, it's more of a, it's more of a people human problem. And to piggyback, like, man, like, I don't, I don't know if it's going to really solve it because you can make dump, make laws, but people might still find a way to go get them anyway. And I know for sure I was in Oklahoma and they just passed a law in October to where it's open carry. So literally you can go get one it's open carry. You can go get one whenever. That's like, how Missouri is, bro. Man, and that's like, why I got a gun because everybody has one already in there. I said, Well, I need one then because everyone has one for all their own reasons. Some people are like, Man, they just want one to protect themselves. Some people are like, Just want to go. They're like, Man, like we love guns, we love to go shoot, we love to go like hunting and, st and stuff, this or that. And to Carrie's point, our it's like our country is so divided because we're, we got so many states that all want different shit, you know what I'm saying? Like Washington wants this and Cali. West Coast, but then the East Coast, you want to like you can go to New York, it's super hard to get a gun. You can go to New Jersey, right next to New York, it's uh, way easier to get a gun. You know what I'm saying? Like Scott said, I just said Oklahoma, Missouri is like open you, carry. You, you literally can walk can. in, bro, and just say, "Let me get that AR." Okay, yeah. sure. You want 500 rounds? Yeah. Huh? Like that, but that's too weak. Like it's got to. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think yeah. what Gaddy's saying, it's got to be a general consensus. <laughs> It's got no nah, for real. That's really how it was. It does. It does. It's got to be a general like we're gonna eradicate it. And no one can have a gun, or if no everybody gonna have a gun, it has to be everybody every, can have a gun. Yeah, it, it's got to be a state. general. It's too much stuff that's all over the place, which is ridiculous. It's a yeah. gun like this can kill somebody. 
and that's the problem. That's our problem is like everything is just so divided because it's like, well, Texas has more power than Washington or Cali has more pro- power than Nebraska, this and that. But it's like, okay, well, we're going to make it tougher in Cali and New York and Texas maybe, but we'll make it easier in Nebraska and North Dakota and this and that. So people are just going to be like, all right, we'll go get a gun there. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> and it's like, that's it's, it's, it's so much iffiness in there. But I do believe like, man, like whatever the call is, like at the end of the day, we just want less gun problems. So if it's, if it's no guns, it has to be the whole country. It has to be like, man, everybody follows the same rule. No guns. Um, or it's going to always just continue to be a problem. Yo, you got you got some Zeke. Hey, talk to us, Zeke. Man, these kids is b- hella loud, man. <laughs> <laughs> what I would say is, basically, y'all y'all really said it all. But the thing, the biggest thing for me is, me personally, because I don't know anything about it, is voting. Like I haven't voted. I've been, you know, I'm 31 years old, so I be feeling like if the right people are in charge, that's going to make change because they're going to be about doing what's right. Um, but like I said, personally, and for me, I need to go out and vote. And I feel like that's probably for a lot of people. That's probably for a lot of people. And then to piggyback on what you guys were saying about, you know, culture and trying to change that, the leaders have to be about what's right. The leaders have to be about what weeding out the, you know, people is wrong. And and then the piggyback about, you know, the cops killing people. Most of the time when them cops kill them black people, they be having like five, six citations on their record that people just throw away. So I be feeling like if, you, if you're if you gonna get in trouble like that, you're gonna get a citation, there should be bigger, you know, repercussions for those things. Then people will think about not doing them or there gotta be background checks. Obviously they probably are, but how how serious are the background checks? You don't just on become Missouri? racist. You don't just become Come racist on. when you when you get, you know, when you get a badge. That's yeah. from the jump. And I don't know how to change it. I've been to a couple of protests. Um, I just never really had the right words since this has happened on what we can do for change. I know everybody's speaking up. Everybody, you know, um, see this little nigga, man. Um. I just don't know. I, I don't know the answer. Obviously, we all don't. But that should be big when I'm talking about, like, keeping the conversation going. Not just black people, not just, you know, people of color talking about it. Um, I think since I've been alive, this has been the most, you know. And this has happened, what, four or five times in the last five years of this happening to a black person. So I think this has been the biggest step steps forward in terms of conversation about the situation. Um, and just everybody from all walks of life, you know, other than, you know, racist people are trying to figure things out or trying to, you know, are trying to have a word in what, whatever's going on. And I just feel like, I mean, y'all, y'all all said the right stuff for me personally. Like I said, I, I gotta be able to do my job of, you know, researching and finding the right people to be leaders. Cause I, I think that's one of the most important things we have really a racist dude it's the president that don't like black people, don't like people of color, don't like immigrants. Like, that shit's whack from the jump, though. Everybody knew that. But, you know, white people and the people for him are going to vote. So as, you know, people of color, we got to do that. And I, I, I just feel like that's very important. I don't know if any of you guys vote, but I know I don't vote. I haven't voted. And I got to make a change in doing that. And I think that's one step, you know, forward in my life of, of changing to do that and I got to. So, I mean, I ain't got a lot to say. Y'all been saying the right stuff. Y'all been saying, giving good ideas. Like I said, I don't know what to do, but I know I can't control that. I can control voting and I'm gonna do that from here on out, you feel me? Absolutely, bro. Right on, Zeke. Yeah, to just piggyback on Zeke, like I, I voted this last time. And I thought my vote, everybody always saying, your vote matters, your vote matters. And I voted opposite of Trump, but Trump got in. 
know what I'm saying? So that's discouraging. So the last time the voting came up, I'm like, bro, I'm not doing it. What does it matter? But you're absolutely right because I need to be in there. I can control Darnell. I can't control the, I can't control America, but us as black people, we need to take advantage of this opportunity because our ancestors fought for us to be able to vote. So I've always been told, like, if you're not voting, it's a slap in the face. I feel like I didn't really understand it until like now, until we really see what's going on now and how the system is corrupt. The system don't like black people. Like like Zeke said, we got a president that's in there that th is not for black people. He's not for immigrants. So now as looking at myself, it's all I always try to self-reflect and see like, yo, what can you do to make everything better? What can your small role be to help make everything better? So you're absolutely right, Zeke. I gotta, I gotta vote. We all gotta vote to try to make change. You know what I'm saying? Like it's cliche, but it's real. Like we gotta try to make change some kind of way. And one thing for me that I always understand, like even if we all go vote and all black people go out and vote, and if it doesn't change and somebody just like Trump get in the office the next time, we gotta understand that God is in control still. And he knows what he's doing. He don't make no mistakes. So whoever's in there, God knew it. It ain't no surprise to him. It's a surprise to us. But at the same time, we still have decisions to make down here. and We have choices to make. So if we're here, then we need to make the right choices and do what we need to do, do our part so that stuff like this don't happen, bro. But that's just me. Man, well said by both of y'all. I, I got to hop off because I got to put Tyler down to bed. But, um, yeah, I definitely appreciate the conversation, guys, Gaddy, DG, you guys leading this thing. Um, so I'll be back on uh, the next time that we do this. And y'all um, continue the conversation. All right, y'all. Hey, uh, oh, Kaz, are you back? Uh, um, one thing I've heard recently, this is kind of going back to the culture thing. I heard a really good analogy for this whole like race in America and everything. And it was drunk driving and it was how drunk driving was like a huge problem in, in our country for a while. And then there was like a group of mothers or, that came together and they kind of basically started an initiative to like disband the whole thing, raised awareness. Uh, there were like certain laws that were put in place and things like that. And now like for the most part, like every once in a while you might have, uh, like some drunk driving incidents or accidents or things like that. But the statistics, the statistics have gone down a lot more. And um, I think that same thing can happen with racism is just raising awareness and having certain laws put in place and things like that. Um, Cause I try to just trying to grapple with it and change like the mentality of like our whole country. That's, that's something that leaves me hopeful. Just thinking about how we, we change just the way we think about drinking and driving and things like that. And um, going off what everyone else was saying with like voting and things like that, I think DG, you said uh, like Trump is just the figurehead, like, and that's 100%. Like, just in me, like, learning about all this stuff, it's the dude, the Mitch McConnell, the Kentucky senator, that's the dude who's pulling all the strings and making the laws and doing all that stuff. And I'm just within the last like few months, I'm like learning about all this stuff and the people in power. So it does start at a grassroots level, like who we elected as our senators, who's the majority leader for the Republican party. Like that's what it is. Cause Trump don't know nothing about politics. He never had a job in politics before he became president, which is wild to me, by the way. So he's not the one doing anything. He's just out there acting a fool, but it's dudes like Mitch McConnell and Barr and like all those guys that are actually running the show and that's who we elect like we elect like they're the state senators and things like that because those are the guys that pass all the bills so um yeah and i haven't been super active in voting either like i did just recently but i mean yeah just being overseas and then dealing with different stuff like i was like i don't know how to <laughs> i don't know how to do that send it in mail it in out like i just wasn't thinking that hard but um yeah no i think i think that's this what has been happening these past couple of weeks is changing the mindset of everybody in wanting to get educated, wanting to vote, understand how important it is. Um, and I think I, I'm super hopeful. I think, I think it's going to change. Like a lot of stuff is going to change, but uh, yeah, that's all I got. There were um, a couple quotes from a sermon that I watched yesterday and it just kind of ties 
what we've been talking about and um, one of them is change the way you think uh, another one is it's not new it's just being revealed and the last one was what you don't address repeats itself so those are all things that I've been sitting with um, thinking over but just really trying to ask myself one of the things um, Isaiah said is what is something I can do and I think last week I talked about change, like acknowledging your platform but then this week I've been mostly focusing on like changing the way I think and part of that's been understanding the way that other people think but challenging the, th the things that are in my mind is that the way that I've been raised, the things that I've heard, the experiences I've had, um, how have those influenced my life and the way that I have approached this situation over the last several weeks and how can I change those things so that I can change myself but also those people that I at least have a, at arm's grasp and then they can touch the next person and they can talk to the next person and it can just kind of be this web effect. Duty. Yeah, just to all that, um, like Zeke said, I think that like vote, going out and voting, we can often control that. Um, I think it was overwhelming. I think it was this, it had said this. I, I could be totally wrong to fact check it or not. But when Obama was in in the race, I think, and I think it was obviously like. A thing too like you just wanted to get a black president in the office but uh but um i think like now it's like it's even more important to know we need to go out and vote and i also think like uh i think a part of it i know for me personally i was like man like i need to know who's uh who i'm voting for like who can i vote for that can just be in my state and it would be the same conversation i'll have for people for you guys that are in california uh scott being in missouri this and that and i know it's harder but still it's like man like we need to who are people in places of leadership that have chances to move up and can create real change so obviously like for presidential candidate we got to look at that but also like looking at who's going to be on city council who's going to be our governor who's going to be on senate um as you guys all know, like the electoral college is really what you have to win to become president. So we have to pe put people who can be in that, who are actually making these big decisions on that level. Um, and it just starts now, you know what I mean? We just gotta be able to tell ourselves and educate ourselves and do that. I, I'm like you guys, I ain't really voted. I ain't never went to a booth and voted. I ain't never sent in no vote. I know I am going to this year. But we need to because this is going to affect uh, the next generation. It's going to affect our kids. It's going to affect our kids' kids. And we don't want them following our same path of like, man, we just play ball and I just go to school and all I do is work out every day and I don't even worry about nothing political because that ain't really my realm. It ain't really my realm, but still, I do need to know who's going to fight for equality. That's it. I'm not fighting for the people who fighting for a person who's just going to be like one-sided either way. I'm just like, man, who's just going to make it equal? Who's just gonna give everybody opportunity? And that's it. That's all we're asking for. It's the same, and that's in our education, that's in our healthcare, that's in anything and everything. It's like who's gonna fight for equality for everybody, for the immigrants, for the blacks, for the Asians, for the whites. Like we're gonna have all those same opportunities, same opportunities to to buy places and do all this and that. And um that's at all levels. So I think like we all gotta uh, just do our part in that. So but um I know I, I want to wrap it up. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Before you wrap it up. Um, one thing that I noticed um, that is helpful for me is when things are shared. So like Gaddy, when you sent me, the lady in Washington is like, yeah, I don't live there anymore. But at the same time, I know people that do. So mm -hmm. it helps mm -hmm. me to educate them or give them resources. And I feel like a lot of people, it's hard to find the resources. It's hard to find credible resources. So one thing I'll ask you guys is now that we have this little group chat, if you guys find things that are helpful, if you know of anything, if you find some template that says, this is how you vote, just because there's so many of us that haven't done it, like there's gotta be a way to do it. And if you know how, I'm just asking for the help. 
Absolutely. So yeah, um, I'm glad I got to talk to you guys this week because we uh, we allowed all everything to settle in, really, of all the stuff that was going on, um, all the protests going on. Protests is probably going to continue to go on for a while, but but all in good favor and all heading in the right direction. And um, I mean, this is just like I said before. This is just like healthy for me because it's almost like a a way of therapy to get all this out, all this trauma that's going on uh, in the world right now. And, uh, to be able to discuss it openly and in a good way, you know, especially with people I care about. Um, and so, um, I would love to do it again next week. Obviously we'll, we got this group chat going on, like Brent said, you guys can send anything and everything that, you know, any post, any, like what I told, like I, I sent Bryn, the lady that's going for governor. She's trying to be the first Korean black lady that's going in the governor, and I think that's great because like she's all for the right things. Um, y'all could do the same for it in California, Missouri, or wherever you guys are. Um, and we just can, can continue to discuss things and things that we we can do, are gonna do, or have done. Um, we can and just like just continue to have this fellowship for each other because I think it's good for us. So I appreciate y'all. Right. Love y'all. Um, and yeah, if y'all got anything else, then y'all can go about your ways. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> good seeing y'all, man. Good good seeing appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all adding this. Yeah, of course, bro. bro of Selfish course. niggas. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy y'all didn't think of me, man. I'm trying to make change, too. <laughs> we always think of you, hey, Zeke, bro. I know. It's, it's all good, though. I appreciate y'all, for real. Keep me in the loop. Yeah. You know, I want to be, I want to help. I want to learn. I want to listen. You feel me? So at, um, keep me, keep me in this. Bet, I bet. For I'm sure. Off top. For sure. I'll All right, you, Carrie. Yeah, y'all Carrie, be, appreciate be. you too, bro, because I know you don't know everybody, but, but Carrie is a good dude. I know him through this and like, I just appreciate your input because it just gives somebody else that we can bounce ideas off of. And I know like this dude is a coach, a player, and uh, I respect your intellect, so I, I appreciate you doing this call as well. Oh, cuz you you a coach? Uh, oh, yeah, you see a real about? one. What's good, bro? I'm trying to <laughs> trying to get into that field. Like, what's up? Hey, man. Hey, DD. Hey, DD. You sound like the typical bro. <laughs> so, I, hey, hey, yo, what's hey, up? It was what's, this though. It was the, it was the hand slap that did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's yeah. good? Hey, hey, yo, hey, yo, I play ball. Hey, uh -huh. I play ball too, man. <laughs> But yeah, man, get my contact info. It's, it's nothing, man. We'll connect. I got you, bro. I, I got you, bro. We'll link up for sure. All right. The great points, everybody. Everybody had great points. And I hope one takeaway that we don't take away from this is that, like, we're trying to make it a debate thing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's opinion is in there. Like, we're op everybody's open. I feel like that's one thing that kept me close to Duty, Dez, um, Brian, Zeke. And I'm just meeting you, G, and I'm just meeting you, KC, like, I think that's what's going to continue to keep us closer because we're we we're open to other people's opinion, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying we're well spoken individuals and we know we're not with the rah rah. So if we could keep it the way we've been doing it and just keep it civil and just continue to talk about ideas, even if we disagree, it doesn't matter. Let's just be open to everything so that we can learn together. For sure. For sure. For sure. Appreciate you, DG. Oh, bro. But I'll holler at y'all. I, go, I gotta go to a customer's house. I gotta, you know, fix her alarm system and stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll holler at y'all. Appreciate it, man. Y'all stay safe. Love y'all, man. Sir. Love y'all. Love y'all, man. Love y'all. Yeah. Love y'all. All right, Brim Brim. Love you. Love you. <laughs>